Hi guys, we're given a mass hanging down from a spring and we're asked to answer these two questions below. The first one is find the amplitude of the oscillation if the mass is initially positioned at negative 10 centimeters with an initial velocity of 1.44 meters per second. And the second question is find an equation for the position of the mass as a function of time. Now since we're being asked two separate questions, the simplest thing to do in this case would be to completely forget about the second question and focus on the first one. <laughs> So before we begin, let me introduce you to the system above. This is the spring, and it's connected to this mass right here. This dotted line represents when the spring is at equilibrium, and since the mass is below that line, we know that the spring isn't at equilibrium. And remember, it's at negative 10 centimeters. So the spring constant, or K, for the spring equals 5 newtons per meter, and mass equals 5 kilograms. So how do we approach this problem? Well, let's start out with things we do know. We know amplitude is the maximum distance away from equilibrium. And we also know the initial position, which is negative 10 centimeters, and the initial velocity, which is 1.44 meters per second. So the real question we need to ask ourselves is, how do we relate amplitude with initial position and velocity? I'll give you a few seconds to think about this. All right, time's up. And the answer is the law of conservation of energy. The law of conservation of energy states total energy in a system will remain constant. And since the elastic force or the spring force in the system above is conservative, we can go ahead and say that the total energy in the system above will remain constant. There are two types of energy in the system above. One is potential energy due to the spring, which is 1 half kx squared, where k is the spring constant and x is the displacement. And the other is the kinetic energy, which is 1 half mv squared, where m is mass and v is the velocity. So we can use these two equations and calculate the energy that the system will have initially using our initial conditions. And then calculate for the energy the system will have at a later time or at a different position, and then use that to solve for A, or amplitude. And I'll show you how in just a second. So using these two equations below, and plug in our initial values, we have 1 half k of x naught squared plus 1 half of m v naught squared equals 1 half k a squared. So you're going to ask yourself, where did this 1 half k a squared come from? Well, at maximum distance away from equilibrium, or the amplitude, all the energy in the system is potential energy. So we can go ahead and replace the x in 1 half kx squared with an a. And that just represents the distance away from equilibrium, which is amplitude. So since we're given initial conditions, we can figure out the amount of energy the system had initially. And then we can also figure out the amount of energy the system had at its amplitude. But well, we don't need to do that. All we need to know is the amplitude, or A. So we can actually use this equation and solve for A. So we can do that by dividing both sides by 1 half, dividing both sides by K, and taking the square root. Doing so will leave us with this equation below, where A equals the square root of K times X naught squared plus M of V naught squared, or M times V naught squared, over K. And these are the values we have for our variables. K equals 5 newtons per meter. Mass equals 5 kilograms. Initial velocity equals 1.44 meters per second. And initial position equals 10 centimeters. Or we can go ahead and convert that into standard units and we get 0.10 meters. So using the equation we just derived, let's plug in our values. And the value we should get for A is 1.44 meters. So the amplitude of oscillation is 1.44 meters. Since we've solved part A, or not part A, question 1, we can go and draw a big fat X through it. Alright, question 2. Find an equation for the position of the mass as a function of time. Well, we know that this spring, or this mass on the spring, is a simple harmonic oscillator. And the equation for position of a simple harmonic oscillator is shown right here, where x of t equals a times cosine of omega t plus phi. 
let's go ahead and define these variables. A equals amplitude, and we just calculated that in part one. So we have that. Omega equals angular frequency, which we need to calculate. And phi equals the phase constant, which we also need to calculate. So let's work with calculating omega first. And the angular frequency, or omega, equals 2 pi over t, where t is the period. And now we need to solve for period in order to use this equation. And period equals 2 pi times the square root of m over k, where m is mass and k is the spring constant. So solving for t, we get t equals 2 pi times the square root of m over k equals 2 pi times the square root of 5 over 5, which is just 2 pi seconds. The units are in seconds because period is a measurement of time. So let's use this answer and plug it back into the equation for omega, and we can solve for omega. Omega equals 2 pi over 2 pi, which is just 1 rad per second. So now we have omega equals 1 rad per second, and we've gone ahead and solved for that variable in the equation. Now we need to solve for its phi. So the equation to solve for the phase constant, or phi, is phi equals the in ta uh, sorry phi equals the inverse tangent of the negative initial velocity over omega times the initial position using the values we have for initial velocity omega and initial position we can go ahead and plug in our values and get the tangent inverse or the inverse tangent of that and our value should be 1.5 but the question we need to ask ourselves now is, is 1.5 correct? Because remember, inverse tangent only gives us answers in the first and fourth quadrant. What if our answer is actually in the third or the second quadrant? What do we do then? Okay, so in order to figure this out, let's look at initial conditions. Initial conditions are that the velocity is positive at 1.44 meters per second. The initial position is negative at negative 10 centimeters, but that's still not enough to help visualize this. So let's look at the graphs for position, velocity, and acceleration of a simple harmonic motion oscillator. So here are the graphs of position, velocity, and acceleration. The displacement graph can be thought of a uh, position since the displacement position is the same thing and the bottom graph of acceleration can be disregarded because we're not dealing with that in this problem but I'll show you anyway so let's look at the first graph the position graph what is this curve on the position graph represented by what function can be represented by or what uh, what can this curve be represented by what function so the function that this curve can be represented by is a cosine graph or a cosine function. So the position graph is represented by a cosine graph. Let's do the same thing for this velocity graph. And the velocity graph can be represented by a negative sine graph. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the bottom graph, acceleration. And acceleration can be represented by a negative cosine graph. All right. So this is very important because we can use what we know about cosine and sine in what quadrant they're positive and negative in to figure out when uh, position and velocity and acceleration will be positive or negative and which quadrant we're really in. So now we have this quadrant system, quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4. In position, we know that's represented by a cosine graph. Velocity, we know that's represented by a negative sine graph. In acceleration, we know that's represented by a negative cosine graph. The phi value we got using inverse tangent is 1.54. And now let's figure out if that's correct. So in the first quadrant, um, we know cosine is positive, so position would be positive. Sine is positive in the first quadrant, but since velocity is negative sine, Velocity would be negative. And acceleration is negative cosine, so if cosine is positive, negative cosine is obviously negative. So acceleration is negative. Let's do the same thing for the second quadrant. 
cosine in the second quadrant is negative, and thus the position is negative. Sine in the second quadrant is still positive, but negative sine, which is the velocity, is negative, so velocity is still negative in the second quadrant. Acceleration is negative cosine, thus if cosine is negative, negative cosine is positive, so acceleration is positive. Moving on to the third quadrant, cosine in the third quadrant is negative, so position is negative. Sine in the third quadrant is negative, but negative sine is positive, so velocity is positive. And acceleration is negative cosine, so negative cosine in the third quadrant is positive, so acceleration is positive. Let's move on to the final quadrant. Cosine in the fourth quadrant is positive, so position is positive. Sine in the fourth quadrant is negative, but negative sine is positive, so velocity is also positive. And acceleration is negative cosine, and negative cosine in the fourth quadrant is negative, so acceleration is negative. So using what we just figured out, let's figure out which quadrant we're in based on the initial conditions we got. Initial position was negative 10 centimeters, and initial velocity was 1.44 meters per second. Position was negative, and velocity was positive. So which one out of these four quadrants has initial, or has position as negative, and velocity as uh, positive? One, two, or three, or four? The answer is the third quadrant. It's the only quadrant that has position as negative and velocity as positive. So that means we are in the third quadrant. And that's shown right here. We need to be in the third quadrant. All right, so the phase constant, phi. This is what we got using the equation. We got 1.5. But since we're in the third quadrant and 1.5 is in the first quadrant, because remember, inverse tangent only gave us the answer in the first or fourth quadrant. But since we're in the third quadrant, we need to add pi to this answer. So 1.5 plus pi equals 4.64 rads. And remember, the reason we added pi was because that's the only way to get from the first quadrant to the third quadrant. Remember your unit circle. That's very helpful. So this is our value for phi. 4.64 rads. Now to figure out the equation for the position of the mass as a function of time, we have all the variables we need. A, or amplitude, is 1.44 meters. Omega, or angular frequency, is 1.5 rads per second. And phi is 4.64 rads. Let's go ahead and plug these into our equation above, and we get x of t equals 1.44 times cosine of 1t plus 4.64. Thus the equation of for position of the mass as a function of time is just x of t equals 1.44 times the cosine of t plus 4.64. And there you go, we just answered the second question. Good job.